Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. We're in Joyce today. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, what we're working on is this RV. Now, this is not typically something I would do in the field, but we're gonna be making a modification. I'm gonna be using some uh, woodworking tools type things. Uh, so here's the big picture. Uh, what they have here is one of these cord hatches, okay? And you pull the cord out from inside. And I'll bring the camera inside to show you, but I think you know what we're gonna be talking about. There's a cupboard on the other side of this. It's just below the kitchen sink. And when this cord goes in, it's just filling up that whole void with, with wire. And uh, the customer doesn't want that. So Dakota, hand me this piece here. So we're gonna be putting in one of these types of um, connectors. I'll make a, um, a link to it down below. And uh, basically the cord then will be one of these uh, I'm just going to take these parts of it and I'm going to, here you go, buddy. All right. So basically it's here, you hang on to these two pieces. Okay. So it's one of these guys with a little hatch door and it's got the little circular connector on it. Now here's a note to self. I did not do this myself. So I'm wanting you not to make the same mistake when you order yours. And, um, uh, I did not order the adapter to go from the round 30 amp thing. So when you order your, if, if you go with this way, there's no air conditioner on this unit, so it really only needs to be just a 20 amp receptacle, but we're gonna keep it at 30. There's several other manufacturers that make them. Uh, Smart Plug makes one that's totally different than this style. Um, they wanted to go with this kind. So um, what I've since ordered is, is the, um, the adapter that plugs into this and then screws on tight, and then the, the dog bone part of it is a 15 amp regular, um, like an extension cord end. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is putting this here, okay? So it'll be nice and aerodynamic, I think because it's got these little curves, it'll improve their fuel mileage, that's a joke. Um, but when they uh, set camp, they could just open this hatch and have their cord. You understand, so we're moving on. All right, Dakota, I'm gonna hand this to you. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera, do some show and tell, I'm gonna show you what we're dealing with here, show you the cord on the inside, and then show you what I'm gonna go through because there's gonna be a hole here. So let me, here's some of the big problems. Uh, Dakota, let me see that Bruce. Okay. Here's the, the challenge that we're having to overcome. Okay. When we take this out, I'm going to have a big hole right in the side of the RV, aren't I? And that hole is going to be larger than this diameter. And so it's not like I can do something with this. So we're going to take a piece of, um, like, I think it's ABS plastic. We're going to cut it, make it a square, and then I'm going to use my table saw and turn that into a circle. Then we'll take a hole saw and cut this out. So those are the, that's what's coming up. Okay. That's what we're going to be doing. And when we're done, we'll have a, like a donut looking piece thick on the outside and center on the inside. This will go inside of that donut. And then we'll have a, an outer ring where we can capture these screws into the side of the RV. Okay. Um, so let's take the camera, do some show and tell. Okay, so folks, here's just a little bit more close up. Um, here's the hatch and the cord basically goes into the cabinet. So I'll take you on the inside and show you that just to, for completeness. And you can see the hole we're having to overcome here. Okay, let's go on the inside and see what that looks like. So here we are under the kitchen sink. There's the bottom of the sink. And this is all that cord that, that we're having to fight every single time uh, they, they put the cord back in their cabinet here. And really all it does is it goes over here and goes down. Here it is here. It goes down into the hole where their breaker box is. Okay. So the purpose of this project is to get rid of all that cord and we'll take this cord and put a new end on it probably. And they can throw that in their truck on one of the side hatches or something like that. Okay. So let's show you how we're going to do this. Okay. So what I've got here, guys, is just a little piece of this white ABS type um, plastic. It's got the little surface on it or one side smooth. I'm gonna make the surface side with the scratchy be the side that's out facing, okay? And so the goal here would be, I'm gonna keep the, these pieces off to the side for now. The goal is to kind of put that in the center and drill a hole in it, in the center of this. But I want, what I want is I don't want this, you could, you could make this square B and you could even kind of round the edges. Um, and, and be done with that. But my personality type, I want to make this circular to make it look like it belongs. And so we're going to just do some simple uh, basic math, maybe a little trigonometry mixed in. And so what I'm going to do is just see what this is. Okay, that I'm looking at about 146 and um, millimeters. I'm using millimeters here. And 146. So I have 146. Dakota, what's half of 146? Uh, that would be 73. 
73 and 73? Okay. So half of 14 is 7 and... Yeah, okay. So I, th I think... Is that right? 73? 73? Okay. Well, we'll find out if 73 is our number. So I'm going to bring this down to 73. Uh, 63, 67. Ah, there's 71, 2, 3. Right there. One, okay, I got 73 millimeters. So I'm just going to use a pencil. Here's a pencil. Okay. I'm just going to basically make a rough mark right there. 73. So, okay. So we're close enough. My two little marks right there. Okay. So let's now go 73 here. Let's do 73 here. So 73 seems to be our little little sweet spot. These are millimeters. Okay. So it looks to me, so I made a little bunch of scratchy marks right there, but it looks to me that that, that seems to be the rough center of my square. Okay. So now I've made a little punch mark. So now what I'm going to do is... Um, I've got this sled that you make, really simple. I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I just took a piece of walnut, which is hardwood, and I just, you know, nailed it to uh, the thing. Now, this is going to be sliding on my table saw. We'll show you that here in just a minute. And I've got a little nail here. It's funny. I was looking all over my shop for a nail. I don't have a lot of nails. I've got a lot of things besides nails, but I don't have a lot of nails. But I found this nail, so we're good. So what I'm going to do now is... Now that I've established the center point of the rough center point, it doesn't it doesn't have to be exact, um, as long as it's representative. Okay, so now I've drilled a hole in there, and this nail should fit through, and this will spin on it, right? Okay, so now what I want to do is. I'll tell you what, let's go over to the table saw where this will make a whole lot more sense, okay? And then I'll show you what we do. So really all I've done is I've found the rough center of this. It doesn't matter if it's the exact center because once we get this on the table saw and we start spinning this around, um, it will become a circle, okay? Um, so if I was off a couple millimeters in any direction, it really wouldn't matter, okay? So let's go over to the table saw and show you what, how we're going to cut this, okay? All right, so here we are at the table saw, and let me, now that we're on the table saw, so here's a sled, you'll see the little track, here's a piece of hardwood, and um, it just fits in there and it just slides back and forth, okay? Certainly not Rockler quality, but it's good enough for Darren and it's good enough for me to do the work I'm doing. So all I'm going to do is make, it a, make a sled on a piece of scrap wood, whatever, and I'm gonna draw a reference line. This line means absolutely nothing other than a point of reference, okay? So then what I do, here's the piece of plastic that I drilled a hole in. I have my, my nail right here. And all I'm going to do is look through this hole to look for that line, okay? And I would like, uh, in other words, the first time I make my cut, in fact, I think I'm gonna, right there. The first time I make my cut, I would I would really like this to overlap just a little bit. So I'm just going to hold my nail, making sure... Okay, so here I'm not exactly overlapping, so I need to go that way just a little bit. Okay, just not much. And that way, that's... Okay, here I have more. Just a little bit, just a little bit, right on it. So you see how I wasn't exact over there where I was originally. And so now I'm just going to take my nail, drive it in. And, um, and then this will spin freely, okay? But the important thing here, we can make, that's pretty cool, make a psychedelic. The, um, Dakota's here with me. So the important thing here is that on my flat side here, like right here, it's just barely overlapping, whereas I think uh, one of these was overlapping more. Uh, you could probably take more time and find the better center point, but for our purposes, this is going to work great, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my blade up just until it passes through. And uh, Dakota, you and I need safety glasses. Um, okay, so we put safety glasses on because when I'm cutting this stuff, I've, I work with this quite a few times on different projects and it has a tendency to go flying, flinging. So what I'm going to be doing, it's going to be noisy, but basically I'm just going to start cutting, 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 get the idea. And sooner or later, I'll have like a bunch of, like a diamond, a bunch of little cuts on it. Once I get it to that point, then I can slowly, slowly, slowly spin this around and it'll make the cut. 
And if I find that it's, I'm not happy with it, I can move this in or out a little bit when I'm making that cut. So as I'm cutting it, well, you're about to see, I'm gonna make, basically make a bunch of triangles all the way around this thing. Just cut a bunch of triangles off, okay? So you'll, you'll see, it'll make sense. So here we go. Fire in the hole, you ready, Dakota? Okay. Blow my blade just a little bit. Okay, so some best practices. I do this with wood, and it's not, and the wood is a little bit more forgiving than this stuff. It's very flimsy. If I were to do this a little bit more officially, I think a featherboard right here would be nice um, to keep it from flipping up. Uh, so I adjusted my blade height a couple of times to make this not grab as aggressively, and so that was nice. I also made my nail a little bit more stout. But so basically, what we've got here is a uh, is a circle. Okay, so now, now that we have a circle, let's go take it back over to the other place and drill the inside circle. Here we go. So I'm back over here now, and so now we've got a, a round disc, okay? And um, so the next question is we need to get that in it, okay? So we're going to use our caliper again. I love working in metric. Um, it, it's base 10. It's so easy. So basically, we're looking at roughly 65 millimeters plus or minus, and I think I've got a hole saw around here. Okay, so we're back over here, and this is gonna be perfect because uh, that's right at 65 millimeters. That's basically right at 65 millimeters. It's maybe a couple of mil over, but uh, that's gonna work. So we're gonna basically drill a hole right in there, and that'll be our inside, okay? So, And I want to put that on a piece of wood. Oh, you know what we need to do? I want to anchor this, so I'm going to screw into it. So uh, before I do that, all right, here's where trigonometry is going to come into play. Um, I need a straight edge right here. So basically, let me move that piece of wood right there. What I'm going to do is just basically uh, draw a line. It doesn't matter where. I'm just gonna draw a line right through my, my circle here. And now I need a protractor. Don't leave home without it. You remember these things from grade school? Um, never thought you'd use one when you're doing this kind of stuff. So Dakota, how many degrees are there in a circle? 180. Excellent. 180, 180 degrees in a circle. So if I were to take a circle, because I basically, folks, I want one, two, three, three screw holes. But it'd be nice if they were symmetrical, right? So if I take 180 and divide it into three, what do I get? 60. Excellent. Good deal. Okay, so basically, um, here's my center point and my protractor. So I'm going to put 90 right there. And actually, it's every 60 degrees. But according to this protractor, it's going to be right here at 30. So there's my 30 mark. And here's my 30 mark. Okay, there we go. So I now have two, is there a glare? I, I can't tell if there's a glare. But basically here's my center point and I drew a straight line and then this one's 60 degrees. They're 30 degrees off the top, but they're 60 degrees from each other. So this one's 30, this one's 30. Okay, so there's your 60. So then, guess what we're gonna do? We then, um, put my pencil in the center point here and I am going to draw a line right there draw a line right here and if I wanted to 
I can erase this first line I made that I was using for reference. So now we've made uh, three pi, uh, three pieces. So the next question that I would have is, um, I want to know, I, I don't, I need to put my screws in, but I want to make sure that my screws have enough meat of this to grab because I'm going to be putting like a mastic tape on it and I want them to grab the bulk of that tape. So I don't want my screws to be close to the edge, but I also don't want them to crowd out this thing. So the next question would be, again, our caliper, let me turn it on, clear it, millimeters. And basically, I'm just going to go from the outside edge here and just ballpark this. Okay, I'm right at uh, 98. Uh, let's just call it 100. So half of 100 is 50. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to go down to 50. Boy, you're good, Dakota. So there's 48, 49. That's close enough. So here is... There is... Okay, so this little line right there will represent where the... Uh, outside of my um, socket is going to be. Okay, so now you get to see a little bit more what we're doing here. I don't know if there's a glare, but just, okay. And so if this goes in here, that should be where those are. So therefore, my screw hole, I want it in the center of where the outside flange of that cover is to the edge. So I'm going to figure out what the half of this is, and that's where I'm going to put my hole for my screws. Okay. So let's see what that number is. And okay, I'm at 20, so I'm going to go to 10 mil right there. Do, 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 10 mil. Okay. So here's 10 mil. I'm going to take my punch, and right there is where one screw is going to go. And right here is where one screw is going to go. And right here is where one screw is going to go. Okay, good deal. How are we doing, Dakota? Making, am I doing it right? Okay. If, if I mess up, let me know because I don't want to. The next, I've got a screw here. Two screws. Three screws. Three screws right here. And so the next, I need to find my... Um, how about this one right there? Okay. Drill is right here. Oh, I already got a bit on it. That was the one I used to do my, my center hole. So I find where my um, punch marks were. Wrap block. I'm going to drill right through here. Beautiful. Now on my marks, I'm putting on the my the back of this. So here here's the back with all my marks. Okay, and here's the front of uh, to keep it clean. So here you have my three little circles where my screws are going to show. So as this thing's going down the highway at 55 miles per hour, and people look over and think they're going to see this, say, what a nice job. Because I don't know about you, but using the golden ratio, if this screw hole was off by a little bit, my eyeball is going to pick up on that. And I'm going to think, that's a shoddy job. Who did that? Okay. So now, here comes a fun part. We're going to change this over to a square bit, a Robinson bit for our Canadian friends. Um, and I just need to screw this down. That's good enough for me. And this one's good enough here. I'm doing this because when I drill this thing, I don't want it to go flying off there. Okay, so now we have that. I'm going to set the drill here. And I have some clamps that I keep running here, so I'm just going to clamp this down. We've already established in an earlier step what size hole to make. Okay, so now let's put some gloves on. I take the uh, drill and drill that out. All right, so this is secure, good. These things will buck if you're not ready. So I, again, I'm using the same exact reference hole that I've been using for the whole project. Okay, so here we go. Okay, there's our donut. I'll take the time off camera and pop that out. Okay, so now let's take this off and see how our donut turned out. What do you think, Dakota, good enough to eat? there. Okay, so now we have a donut. Now here's the question. Does this fit in it? What do you think? I think it will. Hey, there we go. Okay. So if we're going to do a full dress rehearsal, take the safety glasses off. If I were to do a full dress rehearsal, 
Um, there's these little, these things have wings on them and they fit in this only one way. Easily, okay. And then we take our foam gasket, line up our holes. And then I think I'll do my, the, the, the hole at the bottom. And so is that a, okay, it's right there. Turn the whole sandwich over. So there we would then have our centerpiece. It's not gonna let me open it, okay. We would then have our centerpiece, uh, okay. So if I'm holding it right, and then our screw holes, once we do it pretty, it'll, it'll be official. So the next question is, will this donut um, work on the RV? So let's um, go over and see just cl how closely this is gonna fit in the space that we have to make up. Okay, so here's our donut that we made. And let me unplug this. In fact, I'm gonna actually stow that in there. And it looks like we're going to be looking pretty good. Um, yeah, so my, my, I'm going to call this the donut ring. The donut ring is just a little bit bigger than the existing ring. So I'm pretty confident that when I put my screws in, I'm going to grab some meat on the side of this RV. The only challenge is here we have our uh, freshwater fill. And I may abut that just a little bit, but we'll have to see how it goes. Because if I'm in the center, I'm overlapping but uh, I could either move my hole over or um, just kind of slice this a little bit. So I think we're looking pretty good. So the next task, we're done with making our donut. Now let's set everybody up and we'll start cleaning this up and getting this ready, okay? Okay, we have made our donut and we're moving out here to where we're actually going to install it. So here we go. Um, There's a hole we have to overcome. Just for funsies, what I wanna do, let's get all the putty tape off. Okay. Let's see, a little bit of dress rehearsal. So we're gonna clean this up a little bit more, but uh, yeah, that's gonna look nice. And it's going to look something like that when we're all done. So I think I think we're winning. It's going to look very nice. Okay. And so all of my three screws, we'll get them squared up. All of my three screws are going to grab meat, brand new meat on the side of the RV. And then inside of here, we have one, two, three um, holes that will screw into our donut. Okay. So that's how everything's going to be held together. So I then am going to pull this out, all of it, because I need to cut it. And the other end of this, what I cut, is going to be the part that is going to go into the... Um... Okay, so I've got the cord. It won't come anymore. I'm not going to be yanking on it, but I want to go just run inside to make sure that it's not caught on something and that I have it all. So let me go do that real quick, then we'll come right back. Okay, so I've just run inside and, and we're good here. Um, there, it's not caught on anything. So I'm pretty sure I've got all 20 feet of this stuff out here and inside it's gonna be nice and slick. So what we're gonna do is I'm basically gonna cut this right here and clean it up. And this is gonna be what's going to connect to our new, um, I'll call it a receptacle, okay? But I really wanna clean this up first. So let me do that. I'm also gonna need some butyl tape and Dakota's be in my little runner helping me get everything. Now all I'm using here is just some adhesive remover. Okay. And I'll make links for links like this and all kinds of links. We've also got on our, uh, on our website, um, we've got all of these Amazon affiliate links that people have been asking us where they get parts and all this. So we're trying to build that as we get time, we're trying to build more of that, um, links because it's tools that we use and parts that we use and you guys can benefit from them too and hey Amazon gives us a couple percentages for sending you to their site from our site so that's kind of nice of them now another task I'm gonna do on this RV here 
is reseal the whole thing. But I think I'm going to make that a whole other video because I've got maybe some tips and tricks that I can share with you folks on how I do resealing, cleaning and resealing. So that's going to be a whole other video and it's not going to be done today. But um, so, yeah, that's perfect, buddy. Thanks. So we're going to use these tools here to cut this extension cord. Um, so we've got it all cleaned up nice. Put our cap back on this. Um, I need to roll a butyl tape. Boy, Dakota's getting his exercise today. He's walking back and forth to the service trailer. Now, another thing, whenever I use that adhesive cleaner, I always hit it with some alcohol. Um, there's those little sticky back things you get for all kinds of stuff. And they always come with a little alcohol prep pad, and that kind of cleans everything really well. And so my thinking is, well, gee, let's just clean everything real well. And, and it, it's got that <laughs> noise going on to it. So I know that that's clean. Whereas if I hadn't have done this and I just would have kept the adhesive remover on it, it may have had a little bit of a residue. And my thinking is the adhesive remover is what's used to get it off. So if I don't get that residue off and I put butyl tape on it, it might fight me uh, to want to really stick really well. All right, so before I go cutting in a cable, I'm going to test it to make sure that there's no voltage. So I'm just going to take a voltage pin, make sure I got my heartbeat, that little beep beep. And I'm just, gonna, I mean, I'm not plugged in at that end, but you never know. There may be an inverter or something that is inverting back into this. And so I want to make sure if I'm going to cut this thing that it's dead. And so that's just a little quick check we can do. And uh, I'll give myself a little bit of slack to play with here. And so I'm just going to go about right there. All right. There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go back about two inches or so, and I'm just going to wiggle this back and forth. I just want to score the jacket. I'm really not even trying to cut through the jacket. I'm just trying to score the jacket. So when I stress that, it's going to pop on us. Okay. Uh, reminds me of peeling a, peeling a lobster. Um, if you do it just right. Okay, so see, I haven't even nicked the conductor on the inside. I'm just basically barely putting a little bit of pressure to score that. And by me stressing this, it's opening up. Okay. So we're going to come around to this side. I would do the same technique if I was putting a new end on a shore cord, which basically is what we're doing here. Now I'll show you another trick, but it, I haven't gotten one for working on con uh, conductors this size, but I'll show you. It's one of these little coax cutters. Okay, and what you do with this tool, you take out the one of the blades on the, the you take out the blade that has that notch in it that's going to clear that copper conductor. So you, you just grab it and pull it out. And then what you've got, hold on, everything's backwards. Um, I've just got a single blade and it's the blade the, the blade that's in here that's active is the one that on your piece of coax would be used to cut the jacket off and not hurt those, uh, that metal, that, that uh, nickel braid on the inside. And so, but see, it's too big. But if this was like a, an SO cord or like a small extension cord or something, um, this works great for that. And I keep this in my tool, box, tool bag and they've got uh, three different sizes. You can change out the heads um, for um, skinning the jacket off of the, the cable. So that's a tip there, but I don't have one for a cable this big. Um, so if I wasn't talking, I would have been done. I'm just trying to sew into you guys and help any way I can so that you can become proficient in this. And we're making a living doing it. So I want you guys to be able to do that too. So there we go. Okay. So it just snapped. Okay. Never once did my knife cut the conductor or even the jacket of the conductor. All right. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I've got these little, little, you know, zero clearance cutters, and I'm just going to cut off all these um, paper pieces that help it bend and flex without rubbing against itself. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got the business end of the, of the cable here, and we're going to connect it to... Our, our donut. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my donut on and um, I'm going to go ahead and put the, I'm going to just stow this right inside there. I'm going to put my donut on here. And what was my decision was I was going to go, where is it? Okay. I was going to put the single hole on the bottom. Um, Dakota, sir. Um, I've got that uh, little, that small rafter square. It's probably still on the bench. 
Now, earlier what we were talking about is I'm, I'm abutting this guy right here. So I could cut it, but I think I'm just going to go with this. Okay, because when I put my sealant in, I'll just come down and, and do that. That's perfect. That's what I need. And so all I'm going to do is, um, and uh, do I have another one, I think? Um, so what I'm looking for here is, um, you see what I'm doing. It's, it's trigonometry again. I'm gonna, I want these two to be level. How many people are going to do this unless they're really anal like Darren is? So now that I've used this square to match up my bottom angle, I now am going to, uh, let's go this way, line up this square on this plane and align my two screw holes right there. Okay, so by, see how I can move my square up and down? And I just want my holes to, to be there. Um, yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, retarded this way where I like everything to be right. My attitude is if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it right. Hold on, I got to go grab a tool. I've got all these tools. Oh, thanks, buddy. I got all these tools and all this knowledge. So why not do it right? Why, why do it half-assed? Why do a scab job? So there we go. There's what we want. And so now I'm just going to take my little punch and just make little notches. And I want to see how close my new holes are going to be to the old holes. And I see down here on the bottom, I'm going to be pretty close. So I'm going to pre-drill that one. And then this one is, is far enough away and this one's far enough away. So I think we're good. And um, so no problem there. Now, one thing we can do, and I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to, I don't know if I'm going to take a router or, or, or a sander, but I'm just going to, this is a, 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 like a sharp edge, if you will. I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. So I think I would rather do that. And then the next step is to actually uh, uh, put install this. So I'm going to put this on. And then um, it's almost as if I would have drilled a brand new hole right into the side of the RV, if that makes sense. Okay, so off camera, I'm just going to soften this edge a little bit. And I'm going to be filling it with sealant. sealant but you see all these other ones, they have little little softer edges. So let me go do that real quick. It just makes me put my head on my pillow at night a little bit better. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. And all I did was I just took a little um, bench belt sander and just kind of rounded my edges just to make me happier. Okay, um, so we have a punch hole there. We have a punch hole there. We have a punch hole there. Okay, here's how I come up with knowing what size bit to use. So here is the screw I'm going to use. And uh, so all I'm going to do is hold it up to the bit. And um, I want to pick a bit that will cut the bulk of the screw out and leave the threads overhanging. So it looks like 3.30 seconds is a good size right here. I'll show you what I mean if I can get the camera to capture it. Uh, a lot of you guys might already know this trick, but um, I, since this is the kind of a day where I feel like explaining some things more than I normally would. So um, if this is my screw and this is my bit, there are many like it, but this one is mine for those Marines. So here you go. I just kind of hold it up to each other and um, the, the drill is going to drill the meat of the screw out and leaving the threads. Okay. So we are going to pre-drill our holes where we had punched them earlier. Okay, I'm going to keep this bit handy. Some mastic, or I keep calling it mastic. Why do I keep calling it mastic, Dakota? It's putty tape. Dakota used to call it goo. And all I'm going to do with the goo is uh, just apply it to the back of my um, donut. Okay, it's like putting glazing on a donut, right? I'm going to go right to the edge. Uh, what I really want to make sure is that the, the mastic, let's call it mastic again, the butyl is covering my screw holes. Okay, I'm, I'm doing it where it's convenient for me to grab, but I'll show you when I get done. So, so you see what we're doing. Okay. And I need a little piece, maybe like that long. And when you do circles, sometimes it's easier just to take the 
craft the craft paper off the back. Okay. And this will help the water to stay out. So we have put it on the outside. Now here's a fun trick. Um, finding our holes. Let's just see, was it this one? Yeah, that worked. Okay. Robinson bit. Now for the parts that are oozing out, they've got these things that are called window tools. Uh, you could also use your putty knife. In fact, I'll use a putty knife, but what I was talking about the window tool, let's see. Uh, catalog number CRL220. CRL220. So you can find these little window tools is what they're called. They're rounded and pointy on one side and flat and angled on the other. These are fantastic. I buy them in the 10 pack and they're great for just peeling off all of the butyl out of that. Now you could also use a putty um, scraper uh, or putty scraper. A um, These also work equally well. Um, the same sander that I used to round this piece, I can put these on it and uh, I'm frequently a couple times a month or maybe once a month, I'll put a new edge on the front of these because um, they get a lot of use. Okay, so there, we have made our hole smaller. So now we're gonna get our cords all set and uh, I'm gonna open up the strain relief a little bit. see here what's the order of operations um this goes okay so i need my foam gasket in there i'm just trying to visualize uh okay so the foam gasket then that and then this now you'll see on the back of these things guess what white green and black well here are white green and black so it's pretty straightforward i'll tell you what I don't, i'm going to save you guys some time uh, i'm just going to go ahead and make these splices i don't think you need to watch me do that it's pretty straightforward save yourself some some bandwidth and basically I'm gonna strip them back, put them in here. Uh, if you've watched my other videos on electrical, I'm a big fan of torquing things, but this thing does not have any torque limits on it, but it does have a gauge on the back to tell you how far you wanna skin it. But I do not see anything where it talks about torquing. So um, I'm gonna do about 30 inch pounds. Um, I don't know what that is in Newton meters, but as many electrical panels that I've gone in to torque with my torquing screwdriver, you, after you do it on times, you kind of know what 30 inch pounds feels like. It's a little bit, it's right at the point where it's tight. Does that make sense? Uh, in other words, you don't want to tighten it so much that you're fatiguing this, but you don't want to tighten it so loose that it's not grabbing. Uh, there is a, a specific torque where you're elongating the strands and they grab really, really well. Um, this is not something that we're going to be able to access frequently um, to do preventative maintenance. I've got a video where I talk about going into your service panels once a year and just kind of tightening all your unplug. And I would, I even like to see a lockout tag out on your short cord. Um, but um, that made me think of a, of a tool we're going to be making for you guys, but we'll, we'll offer that later. But, um, but you would be surprised if your homework assignment was to go into your breaker panel to disconnect everything, go in your breaker panel and just kind of torque all those screws. You'd be surprised. And what we find the ones that are the loosest are the white neutral wires. Okay, um, those should be about um, anywhere from 25 to 30 inch pounds. Uh, we have a link on our site for a uh, um, um, torquing screwdriver, um, which I've used in a lot of my videos as well. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and skin this and strip it and put it all in. Um, I think you see what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna save you guys some trouble. Um, but once I get it in there, you'll see there's these screw holes here and um, this all gets bonded in together and I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. I'm just trying to save you guys some time and trouble. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my my three black or hot neutral and ground wires bonded, tightened really good because I'm not going to be going back into here. And on the back, we have a strain relief. I did have to use a little bit longer screws. I don't know what their intention was. This was a pretty big wire and it's going through a, a space that they don't really give you. So I went with a little, little bit longer screws there. Okay, and so they give us this foam gasket here 
It was nice to be able to take this cover off. So remember that fell off earlier. So I'm gonna put the cover back on, okay? And align some screws. Let me, let me make sure. Now, another thing I've done is I've, I've marked where my holes are gonna go. And uh, so let's see here. The first screw is going to um, align our foam. Okay, there we go. And I am going to stand up to align everything so I can see it. Okay, I just wanted to grab it a little so I can get everybody else aligned. What I'm fighting is that uh, foam. I want to make sure that foam gasket gets where it needs to be. And if everything's good, it'll line automatically down here. It does. Okay, so here we go. I'm just bumping it. Nice compression on our foam gasket. There. Well, how about that? Okay. And that's that's in there pretty well. And uh, so now we'll get our um, the thing that I, I mentioned that I'd forgotten to order. And um, I was so excited to figure out how to do all this that I forgot to get this for you guys. So um, there you go. All right. Well, folks, if um, I hope this was helpful, we're done here with this. We're going to move on to some other projects. But if this was helpful, thumb up our video, subscribe to our channel, ring that bell. You can support us on Patreon, all kinds of things. Just head over to our website, myrvworks.com. And uh, we've got a lot of resources for you. So from uh, Joyce or uh, Dakota here, I was thinking Joyce and Dakota all at the same time. So Dakota has been my tremendous helper today, holding things and running behind the scenes on the camera, getting us stuff. So let's give him an applaud. Yay. And I uh, give him a shout out. And um, so for, uh, for Myrie Works from Joyce Washington, where... My every work, um, happy, <laughs> <laughs> happy campers say my every works. My every works, very good. Okay, so until next time, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. <laughs>